Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends. This is Dr. Me at the Actuarial Academy, and we are preparing to solve a confidence interval problem. We have a random sample of size 9 from a normal distribution with a sample mean of x bar equaling 9 and a sample variance s squared equaling 4. And we'd like to find a 95% confidence interval for the population mean mu. Um, one thing you have to recognize right off the bat when solving confidence interval problems is look at the sample size. Um, anything under 30 is considered in statistics, rule of thumb, to be a small sample size. And so when you're forming a confidence interval, that has to be taken into account. And that's what fact is here for. Uh, the reason why you have to be careful is you have to make a decision whether you want to use the Z distribution or the T distribution. The reason is, is for small sample sizes, S, the sample standard deviation, will introduce an additional uh, variability to your estimate that really needs to be taken into account. Um, for larger sample sizes, this is less important because S, the sample standard deviation or the sample variance um, is a better approximation for large sample sizes and things stable, stabilize uh, for the estimate of the population variance. For small sample sizes, we need to uh, use the t-distribution because it's going to give us a little bit of a wider confidence interval than a z would, again, to take into account the, the uncertainty in our estimate for s. So the fact is, if your x sub i are distributed normally with mean mu and variance sigma squared, iid stands for independent and identically distributed, then this quantity here, square root of n times quantity x bar minus mu over s, is distributed as a t distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom, where n is our sample size. So um, now that's the hard part, really just recognizing whether you should use the z or the t. So the trick here is clearly for size sample size n is equal to 9, as we discussed, we should use uh, a t. Okay, since we are forming a 95% confidence interval, what we have here is that alpha is equal to 0 0.05, which means that our alpha over 2 is equal to 0 0.025, which then gives us our t value. Okay, because again, we're dealing with the, the t distribution here. Of course, when you're dealing with the t distribution, you have, another, you have a parameter <coughs> that you need to take into consideration. That's the degrees of freedom, which is just one less of your sample size. So we've determined what our t value is. It's 0 0.0, sorry, it's 2.306. Now let's stop for a second here and to talk about this a little bit. Um, if we were to use the z distribution, again, if we actually knew what our popula population variance was, or we have a very good estimate of it because n is large, then we would be using the z distribution. And this value here, uh, z of 0 0.025 um, would actually end up being 1.96. So you can see how much larger this confidence interval is going to be due to our lack of knowledge of what sigma is or, and, of course, the small sample size. Um, and that's taken into account with the degrees of freedom right here. All right, so uh, we could, sure, let's just go ahead and do that. Just for completeness, uh, it's always nice to draw the t distribution. Of course, it is mound shaped just like the z, but it just has wider tails. And so really what we're talking about here is if you do look up the t value in the t distribution where you want 0.025 area here, and you also want 0.025 here area as well, then the corresponding t value uh, would be equal to, this is 0 0.025, is 2.306, like we said. And this is based on degrees of freedom is actually equal to 9 minus 1, which is 8. So that gives you a little pictorial. So it follows that, I want to be complete and actually kind of derive the confidence intervals. Since this quantity here is distributed as a t distribution with 8 degrees of freedom, it follows that uh, this random quantity here, the probability that it falls between minus 2.306 and 2.306 is 0.95. And that was by 
by construction. And so this is how we actually generate our confidence interval. Um, if you do a little bit of arithmetic here, or not arithmetic, algebra, then this is the same as saying this, this is the probability that mu, the population mean, is between x bar minus 2.306 times s divided by square root of n, and x bar plus 2.306 s divided by square root of n is actually equal to 0.95. Okay, so when you actually go out, take your random sample from the normal distribution, um, the probability that once you generate this confidence interval that it will actually capture mu is equal to 0.95. So this implies that x bar plus or minus 2.306 s divided by the square root of n is a 95% confidence interval for mu. Looking back at our actual original problem, we just fill in the data for this here, and if we do that, then we actually, if I did it correctly, using Excel, I got 7.4626, okay, and I put a line over that because that was actually repeating, and then our upper confidence limit is 10.5373, and that is a, again, just kind of dittoing here, 95% percent confidence interval for our mu. Okay, thank you very much.